Hello everyone, hope studying is going well. I wanted to start this mini-series on multi-system pathologies that are very high yield for your step one. Today, we are going to be breaking down Marfan syndrome. I organized it like an ICU physician in the sense that I broke it down by systems and we're gonna be covering the test questions that they can ask per each finding with Marfan syndrome. We'll first start with CNS and ophthalmology. Now, remember that Marfan syndrome patients are going to have lens dislocation. And this lens dislocation is starkly contrasted from the lens dislocation that you get in homocystinuria. Remember, patients with homocystinuria, they typically have a Marfanoid habitus and they are going to have a deficiency in cystobetathione synthetase. In homocystinuria, the lens are going to dislocate in a medial and nasal direction, whereas in Marfan syndrome, the lens typically dislocate in a superior and lateral direction. From a cardiovascular standpoint, remember that patients with Marfan syndrome have bad connective tissue, and thus their tunica, intima, and media are not going to be as robust. They are going to present with aortic dilation, aortic regurgitation. Remember that this can be heard as a diastolic murmur, heard best at the right second intercostal space. And if you see a Marfan's patient who is going to have that tearing chest pain or a patient who has Marfan syndrome having a history of aortic regurgitation and then suddenly has blood pressure issues, you are going to be thinking of aortic dissection. Remember that patients with Marfan syndrome, because of their connective tissue deficits, they can have mitral valve prolapse. Now, mitral valve prolapse presents on your USMLA exam as a audible click. And remember that maneuvers that reduce the amount of blood in the heart, i.e. that reduce the amount of preload in the heart, are going to make the murmur of mitral valve prolapse louder. From a pulmonary standpoint, because these patients are going to be tall and slender, they are at risk for spontaneous pneumothoraces. Now remember that a pneumothorax is going to be described on your exam as an acute onset of shortness of breath. Maybe their pulse oximetry is going to be low. They're going to have a tracheal deviation towards the side of the lesion if it's a spontaneous pneumothorax. And the mechanism is going to be a rupture of apical blebs. Very important for you to know because, again, connective tissue is messed up. Now, remember that in pneumothoraces, on your physical exam, you're going to have decreased breath sounds and hyper-resonance to percussion because there's air in the plural, plural, excuse me, in the plural space. From an MSK standpoint, Marfan syndrome patients are going to have long, long fingers, increased arm to height ratio, as well as joint hypermobility. And if we do a quick differential of Marfanoid habitus, remember that not only homocystinuria is going to have a Marfanoid habitus, but also your MEN2B are going to have a Marfanoid habitus. And this is exquisitely high yield as those patients with MEN syndromes are going to have other endocrinopathies buried in the question. So for example, they may have issues with parathyroid or medullary carcinoma or oral gangliomas or pheochromocytomas. You have to tease those out. And that marfanoid habitus may be a clue plus endocrinopathies that you're going down the MEN route. From a genetic standpoint, the Marfan's syndrome patient is going to typically have a mutation in fibrillin. I always kind of want to define these vocab words. Fibrillin is actually a scaffold for elastin. And what does elastin do? Well, elastin is important for elasticity, the ability to stretch, and such that if you don't have good fibrillin, you don't have good elastin, and you can become very hypermobile, this could lead to vascular issues, which we talked about, as well as joint hypermobility, which can present as recurrent joint dislocation. Very important for you to know Marfan syndrome. I hope that this is helpful and more multi-system pathologies for your USMLE to come. Let me know what you thought about this video. Thanks again.